This episode is sponsored by The Great Courses Plus. Learn everything about anything with unlimited video access to the world's greatest professors. Previously, I explored making my own optics to correct the flaws in my own vision with the help of Louis Dartnell. After making my glasses, Louis challenged me to attempt to make a microscope and a telescope. And maybe see if you can use your telescope to see the moons orbiting Jupiter. I've already succeeded at seeing the invisible world right in front of me with the microscope I made. Now next, I want to explore extending my vision to be able to see the far off and distant celestial bodies by making a telescope from scratch. One thing I've failed at so far in my previous attempts is to make actual clear glass entirely from scratch. Despite several attempts and various improvements along the way, I still have not been able to make glass with the necessary clarity for lenses. Instead of repeating my failures once more, I'm going to go a different direction, recycling old glass. This is a little outside the usual restrictions I place on myself of starting with ingredients only from their naturally available sources. However, glass is an extremely plentiful material in our world and is resistant to decomposition. So for the next million years, manufactured glass is about as close to a naturally occurring material as you can get. But for the time being, I returned to Fosai for some help turning old glass into new glass for my lenses. Once again, we rebuilt the kiln, this time with the help of Eric, a glass blower, to build a more efficient kiln. Using some broken glass, we melted it down in around 5 hours. Then we poured the glass onto a steel table, forming some flat pucks to use for the lenses. Then we dropped the pucks into a kiln and waited overnight for them to anneal. Despite starting from recycled glass this time, I even still wound up with a few bubbles in my glass. This can likely be solved by adding some additional soda flux, which is also the main cause of my past failures as well, but hopefully these lenses will still be workable. Next I ground them flat, removing any excess texture or lumps. Using a diamond tip drill bit, I cut out the lenses to the desired diameters. Oh. After the first one got away from me and ripped my finger open, I went for a more controlled setup for the rest of the lenses. Now, I need to grind them into shape. The telescope works by using a series of lenses to bend the light that enters it, enlarging the image. The telescope Galileo made used a combination of a convex and concave lens for this effect. But a few years later, Johannes Kepler created an improved version that allows for better magnification, instead using two convex lenses. So this is the type of telescope I'm going to attempt to make. When I previously made my eyeglasses, I just eyeballed the curvature and ground them on a flat surface. This unfortunately wasn't the greatest, as it caused a very distorted vision when you look through my lenses. To make my telescope lenses with the correct and consistent convex shape, I set up a crude rig to spin one of the blank lenses. Pouring on some abrasive grit, I then ground the lens by rubbing the grit around with another glass blank. This causes the lower lens to grind into a convex shape, while the upper one grinds the opposite into a concave shape. 
With the setup I'm going for, the objective lens needs only a slight curve, with a 60 inch focal length, so it didn't require all that much grinding. The eyepieces however require a much steeper curve, and I was finding this method pretty slow. So I tried another method. Doing it this way, I still had to eyeball the overall curvature of the lens, but it should at least give it an even curvature around the radius. Then lastly, I finished them up and polished them to be optically clear, or at least as clear as it could be with all the bubbles. Next, I will need to make the body of the telescope that will hold the lenses. Previously, I cut down a tree to make the frames for my glasses. I used my microwave to dry small pieces and almost set my kitchen on fire. With a bunch of wood left over still, I thought it'd be best to cut it and dry it correctly. I first had the logs properly cut at a sawmill. After that, I paid a visit to Rick from Wood From The Hood, who let us put our lumber in his industrial sized kiln and let it slowly dry for a few weeks. With my boards dried and ready to go, I then brought it over to American Workshop, an open to the public woodworking shop where Reed and Dan helped me construct it. First, we had to square up all the warped wood, planing everything completely flat. Then we cut the boards to form two octangular cylinders. The type of telescope I'm building requires a fairly long scope, so this thing is going to turn out pretty big. Once combined, it'll form two cylinders that slide inside of each other, allowing the focal length between the two lenses to be adjusted. We used a lathe to create the round end pieces that will hold each of the lenses. Lastly, to add a little extra color to the wood, I made a wood stain out of the walnut husks I've had in my freezer now for the past several years. I originally collected them two and a half years ago with the intent of using them as a dye for my suit, but after that project grew to be way longer and more challenging than I ever expected, I ended up cutting the dyeing part out of it. So I'm very glad I can finally find a use for them. Found somebody on Craigslist who has some walnuts growing in the backyard, I guess, and just has tons of them and just gives them away for free. A little trouble finding the place. I think it's the right address. If not, I'm about to get arrested for trespassing. Almost went to the wrong address. I think I got the right one now. Those would be make-its. Maybe you don't want that one. <laughs> Got a hole in the glove, so now I literally have a green thumb. Probably for the next couple weeks until the skin replaces itself, because this is apparently a very strong dye. I boil the hulls in water and then let them sit for a few days. Then they just need to be brushed onto the wood for a nice natural stain. Now, I just gotta put everything together. But first, 
I wanted to check in with Lewis. Hey Lewis, so I uh, just wanted to follow up with you and let you know that uh, I ended up making the microscope and telescope, although yeah. with some mixed results. <laughs> do, do elaborate. What happened? So first I ended up having a hard time getting the clear glass. I did a few more attempts and followed some of your suggestions, but even then, just never really got any perfect clarity that I needed for lenses. Maybe if you can get to the seaside for your next trip, uh, try and collect some seaweed and extract soda ash from that, that might work better as a flux. But is that your, your telescope in the background there that I can see? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, first I was able to make a microscope. I used existing glass and I was able to see some paramecium from a pond. So that was a, a Leeuwenhoek style microscope. That was just a tiny bead of glass that you solidified as it dripped and cooled. Yeah, it was surprisingly simple. And how did the telescope turn out? Have you been able to look at the craters on the moon or the moon's Jupiter? Took it out last night and uh, it wasn't the best result. <laughs> but you, you could at least see the moon through it. You could find the moon. <laughs> I, it, I could tell it got brighter, I guess. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I could tell it was definitely magnifying it, but like the image was distorted and there's like a pattern on it. So I think, I think uh, some of the air bubbles just got magnified, that those flaws that... Uh... So there's still seeding in your glass and you've still got tiny little air bubbles. Yeah. So maybe that would be helped if you just left it in the kiln for a bit longer. You need to let give time for all the bubbles to escape. Um, and the other trick is if you slightly cool down the kiln towards the end, the glass starts contracting as it cools and that really helps squeeze out the air bubbles. That, that's another glass maker's trick that I learned when I was trying mine. So I'm going to try and tweak it some more and see if I can solve those issues I had and hopefully get a better image. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, let me know how it goes. And I think what you could maybe try next, Andy, your next challenge to level up on the series is maybe try to use your experience in making glass and optics and create a primitive camera from scratch and try to take a selfie in the most truest and fundamental sense you could ever make a selfie by, by making a complete photograph from scratch. That would be really awesome. <laughs> Maybe later this year I'll be able to give that attempt. Sounds good. So I made a selfie from scratch myself for the back page of the book so we can compare selfies next time we chat. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Thanks again for your help. No problem. Uh, let me know how it goes, Andy. I really look forward to, to seeing your, your camera project. Cheers. Cheers. While well, my first attempt at the telescope was a bit disappointing, in the following weeks I'll be making two other telescopes through some other unique methods that will hopefully be more successful. I'll also be working on fixing the issues with my lenses, and hopefully we'll have a follow-up video with a now working telescope. When I'm doing research for my channel, one of the sources I turn to is the Great Courses Plus. Whether it's for research, learning a new skill, or to just keep your brain sharp, you should check out The Great Courses Plus, an on-demand video learning service where you can watch lectures from Ivy League professors and experts from places like National Geographic, the Smithsonian, and the Culinary Institutes of America, anywhere, at any time. A subscription gives you an unlimited access to a huge library of 7,000 video lectures about anything that interests you. Science, math, history, literature, or even how to cook, play chess, or become a better photographer. One video I'm gonna check out once I get my telescope figured out is Our Night Sky, an introduction to the fundamentals of stargazing. Great Courses Plus is now offering our viewers a free trial and plans starting as low as $14.99 per month. Show your support for our channel by subscribing today at thegreatcoursesplus.com forward slash HTME. Click the link in the description below to start your free trial today.